This is Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he is on fire. We got work to do, and we're getting on the, this task, and we are full bore. And uh, let's get into this. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, right now we're going to, I said we would go to uh, Job. Uh, let's go to Job. And let's go to Job 22. We're going to go to Job 37 in a little bit and uh, and really show, uh, really get into this uh, firmament idea, okay? But before we do, we're going to go to Mr. Job. Job is a Hebrew name for a gentleman, and it refers to affliction. Now, obviously it doesn't mean affliction, book 18 in your Bible. It obviously doesn't mean affliction all the time, because... At the end of Job's life, everything turned out nicely. Now, let's go to, it means affliction as, a, as, a, as an operative word. In other words, the, the emphasis is on the affliction that he had and, and how it was not a short period thing. It was, or rather, it wasn't in gravity. It was a long period of what we would call a trial or a in a testimony okay let's go to job uh, we're going to go to job 22 as i give you a, a little darker look at this illustration so you can kind of see a little bit better uh, some of the center items it also gives you a nice view of the earth is founded upon the waters and the sea and so forth and uh and I didn't put water on top of the land, and that's where most of the water essentially needs to be, but that's okay. I wanted it uh, anatomically correct, so to speak. And I also think that the height is the same as the base. But uh, I don't know why I made it longer. I think I made it longer to just add some, uh, you know, some central ideas and, and some images such as the the rainbow, the earth, the water, and the dome. And we have a cloud cover, and which is out of place, but that's okay. And we have the, the, uh, the firmament, or the astrodome. And then we have the water on the astrodome. And of course, we have the, the, uh, the throne of God. And that is called the third heaven. And it's also called his sanctuary. And it is a an obvious it's obviously one of the two places that beings can live. And I want to say it one more time. That the Bible, when it talks throughout the entire Bible, and, and, and I'm not that concerned about other people with their other opinions because uh, I'm old enough and I study grammar enough to know simple grammar and I and I don't need anyone to to really teach me anything other than the very simple A B Sedarian elementary stuff here, which is there's only two places that living beings can live. Uh, other than the, the, the bottom the, the bottom bowl that you're looking at, which is below the can. Because it's one big giant can or canister and on the top of the can, there's living beings, which are spirit beings. And at the bottom of the can, in the can, are living beings also. Now, let's talk about this for a moment. Let me share this with you. The soul that dies, we just looked at that scripture, where the soul is going to die. We didn't go to the Genesis uh, references to uh, the body dying and so forth, but... The soul, the soul either goes up or down. The body goes back to the earth, but you are four ounces, and that four ounces moves around like when you get out of your automobile. And you're either going to go up or down. And of course, we're here to establish Adam's family, and those who are a part of Adam's family, the human family, we're, we're here to take you from not knowing where you're going and going down to serving and loving Jesus Christ with the opportunity to do so and to go ahead and do that. 
to exhort you to the initiation process and the subsequent life that you have after your initiation. And both of these periods are to be established properly in sound doctrine, King James Protestant teaching, so that we know for sure that you are saved. Because if you go through these Protestant steps, you are indeed following the proper format so that you do own your soul. So that when you do move on, and your body and the breath leaves your lungs permanently for more than a minute or so, that you, you, you're, you're going to be dead, and your soul's going to leave your body, and that's your suke, leaves your sarks in the Greek. And so you're going to leave, and you're going to take off. Now the rapture is, is, is a time when everybody gets together. Those who have passed away before, and those who are alive, walking around, who are Christian people. And they're going to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? Now, more specific to our diagram here, I wanted to show you that, and remind you again, that, that, there, that there are no multiple places to live. There are no worlds other than the worlds you see. Like you have a world of a, of a sucker. I used to uh, really, really just even look at some of the uh, uh, Disneyland suckers that we used to enjoy back in the day. I, I never got too many of them, but I really enjoyed the grape ones a lot. And of course, the, the orange uh, suckers uh, were really good, lollipops. And they were worlds of candy and, and uh, of course, with uh, lots of sugar, pr predominantly sugar, with a little bit of grape in there. And, oh, boy, they were just nice. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have them anymore, but uh, when I used to go to Disneyland, and of, course, and, of course, Disneyland now has been taken over by some people who may not be very nice people, and they're not honest and caring and so forth. Uh, so, the, so the company has changed, maybe, but this is what we're, we're, we're hearing. We won't talk about that. But anyway, let's keep going as we get into, uh, we're going to turn to uh, Job 22, and we're going to go to verse, and this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. This should be uh, 24 now. Uh, 25, let's see, 20, we have 22, 23, 24. This should be 25. We're on video 25. If, if, if not, I'll, I'll change it. But I hope that this should be 25. Let's go to 22 of Job's book, where he was tried with difficult circumstances to see if he still loved God, if he still loved God under difficult circumstances, and to see if he still wanted to please God, and and to still teach the the teachings of God in tribulation, in difficulty and to demonstrate his devotion to the Lord under all circumstances, which is what the, what the book is about. Okay? And that tribulation has affliction, that's what its name means, which basically means difficulties that are uncomfortable. Circumstances, right? Let's go to 22, we're talking about the waters now some more. 2212, which is the center of the, of the illustration here. Let's go to 22, 12, 11. Let's start with 22, 11, Job's book. Or darkness that thou canst not see. And, ab and abundance of waters cover thee. So that's telling you that what's covering you, it doesn't mean it's covering you physically. It means it is, it is a dome over you and covers you. It doesn't directly cover you. Okay, and that it is a dome and it has waters and it's dark. So the abundance of water here is dark. We can go to the next scripture and talk about what we've already talked about. Is not God in the height of the heavens? And behold, the height of the stars, how high are they? So we can see here that, that repeatedly your Bible tells you that God is on top of the waters. 
The waters are called the heavens, and he is in the heaven of the heavens. And the word heaven comes from the root word meaning to heave, or it's very high. In other words, it's very high to you because you're low. So in our, from our perspective, it is indeed a position of something that is over you and that is heaved, or you could use the word possibly epibeno in the Greek. It is a high place. That's what the, the word heaven means. To God, it's not a high place, per se. That's home. Because he, he doesn't live low or below. That's not where the Lord lives. His sanctuary is on high. Okay? So here we have a clear reference to the abundance of waters or streams that are obviously moving somewhat. I do, I do not know how they're moving, but they are moving on top of the dome or astrodome, which is called the firmament, which is called a covering, which is called a tent, which is called the sky, which is called, in our next reference, it is called a glass dome or a glass dome. A strong glass, molten looking glass, okay? So obviously the, the components of, of the, 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 uh, the dome are glass. We already mentioned that God did, he, 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 he beautified the glass. That's what it means. He beautified it and he put some artwork in there. And, and let's get into a little bit more of that. So thou canst see the abundance of waters. And we call this the Thunderdome or the Astrodome. And this is why thunder echoes and, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's loud. is because the thunder is actually happening under a dome. Although the, although the, the dome is uh, really far away. I mean, uh, if I can use that kind of terminology. Uh, the dome is it, it's, it's, it's pretty... It's pretty high. I would probably say 12,000 miles at the apex, which is the, 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 uh, the North Star, okay? Now, we're going to move on to... Now, we already talked about the Lord is covering himself with a firmament, which means a, a, a bent uh, uh, image of some sort. The firmament means... A covering or a tent or a dome or or a halo or, a, or an arc let's put it that way and that arc in, 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 in the case of our, lo our, our lovable father he has a, he has an arc above him that is a rainbow and it, it is his glow and it, it, it reflects his personality it, it's, 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 as we say in English that's father's persona okay and it's called a firmament also. So a covering is called a firmament. Now in this case, we're looking at Father's covering, and we're looking at the, the covering over you that, that we just referenced. It's called a firmament, and it's also called the sky. Okay? Now we look at the sky as what is above us the atmosphere, and the certain levels of atmosphere. However, the Bible refers to the sky basically as the, as the dome. I, I think it's okay to call the sky the sky as we call it too. However, you, you must add what the Bible calls the sky or the firmament, which is the very hard, glassy astrodome, okay? Now, now let's go to some finishing touches here. Let's go to Genesis 2.1. Because I, I, I've been hammering this home and I don't want to stop it. Because we, we have a lot of uh, opposition to simple Bible doctrine in the world. And we're here to gently disagree. You know, to, to gently tell the people who are wrong that they're wrong. Okay? I can't emphasize that enough, that when the Bible says heaven and earth, that's all there is for living beings. 
and from Genesis to Revelation chapter 22, there is no other mention of anything else than the canister you're looking at here. And we can, we can come to some safe conclusions as to the height of the canister based upon the scriptures we, we read, such as we looked at uh, the Lord sees humans as grasshoppers. That's very, very, very simple grammar. And, and for, for you or anyone else to, to try to malign very simple script, let, let's just leave those people alone. We just pray for people, uh, and that's what we do here. Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. So the, the, the every, every, every thing that's within the earth, what, what, the, what people call the universe, everything is done. There are no new nothing, there are no old nothing, there are no, it was created in these six days, and that is the end of the story. Obviously, uh, Eve was created uh, evidently in, in some time frame after and so forth, and uh, we have other things that are, 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 that are happening, but that's after the tribulation period, or at the end of the tribulation period. But New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven, which means there's nothing new again. There's still nothing new. Because New Jerusalem is a city that's going to be placed on the earth somewhat, I don't know how it's exactly it's going to be placed on the earth, but that's where Christians are going to live for eternity. And it comes out of heaven, which means, guess what? Nothing has still been added to the canister. And I want, I, I want to hammer that point home because we, we, we're almost done with our middle section here and uh, talking about waters and firmament or the, 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 the dividing astrodome from water and, and air and so forth. Now let's go to uh, Psalm 57 and, and let's try to add some science with some theology pertaining to how much God cares for you. And, uh, and I, as I told you before, I, I like to do this quite often, and, and that is to, uh, to insert that, you know, that we, we want to give praises to God and we want to share our hearts with God while we're doing all of these studies. And, you know, I, I saw a Bible teacher here the other day he was talking about the Antichrist and how many names he has, the lawless one and all this, and, uh, and he just kept going and going. And I, I wouldn't want to do that. What he did was fine. It's just that I don't think that, I, I think he should have stopped the, the lesson talking about the powers of evil and so forth and stopped the lesson and, re, and remind the Christians there at church service that we're here to talk about these horrible things that are going to happen to the world and are happening and did and have happened. And, we're, and we want to stop it. We don't want to go too far into science and this and, and the Antichrist and all these ideas in the Bible without talking about the good stuff. And I've mentioned to you before, this ministry is basically done with talking about what we call in America negativity or, you know, uh, uh, mean people, evil people, stuff. I'm basically done with that. I will probably bring all of those lessons on error, which was 15. I changed it to 25. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make error playlist 25, and I will put all of the things that are error and harm and, and lying and, and, and malice and, and, and pernicious behaviors and so forth. It's all going into 15, and it will be labeled as for adults only. And, um, and that's where I'm going to focus uh, because we have to teach these things. We have to teach the enemy and, you know, and things like that. I may have to put category 24 uh, under um, main sanctuary teaching only. Okay? So, and uh, because we're going to focus on beauty. I had beauty as 141 on my old playlist. Uh, but now I'm going to put beauty as its own. It has its own category now. And that is category seven, the beauty of heaven. And I'm going to put all the beauty lessons on there. And, and I'm going to uh, probably redo beauty for this year. It, it won't be that difficult. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll put the foundation of beauty on. Uh, I already have a good foundation for the, 
the, uh, the, 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 the beauty of heaven and, and beauty itself for 2022. And I'm going to uh, go over the basics and then I'm going to leave it alone because, as I said before, and I'll remind you, those of you interested in this ministry and this service to the lovable Jesus Christ, that we are here to focus on positive things this year pretty much 90-80% of the time. It's time for it. It's time for us to really focus on beauty and the grace of God and mercy scriptures like we're reading right now, okay? Which means we're going to be spending, spending a lot of time, excuse me, on King David big time, okay? This ministry is closing out on the book of Revelation, on, 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 on heaven and what heaven looks like and, and going to heaven, the rapture scriptures and, and David and things of this nature, uh, uh, these scriptures will be the main focus. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go through those uh, items very, very slow. Because we basically have the foundation of our Christianity and sound doctrine. I've already gone through it in my old playlist, but this news channel, I'm gonna have to load up a lot of basics, but we're gonna start reading through the Bible and we're going to concentrate on the good stuff. We're not going to talk about downstairs a lot and, and things like that. We're going to focus on uh, going through the Bible slowly. And I've already started with blessed. I already started with the concept of blessed. And I looked at it from the perspective of category uh, 10, which is context and terminology. And, and how the word blessed has a different context from great-grandfather to great-grandson. The context changes quite a bit, okay? And that lesson is available for you, and I just gave a, a little a sneak peek at what I went through uh, that's available for you, okay? And, and uh, blessed is category 22, and I also prob will probably put that lesson under 10 and stuff like that, which is learning how to understand the context of a word is not... Mickey Mouse situation, it's very serious, okay? And, and I illustrated that for you in that lesson, which is available for you. Now, we're going to wrap up, I'm going to wrap up my day now, and uh, I'm going to get to uh, Psalm 57, and we've only got about nine more before, well, uh, about nine more before we get to the bottom. We start talking about earth some more, pillars, and the bottomless pit, and so forth, Okay. Which means we're doing pretty good here. We're, we're, we're going faster than I thought, and uh, that's good it, it, to make these uh, videos as short as possible for the, uh, the, the, the Americans and other people around these mesas that, that don't have that much time. And so, and I'm always thinking about uh, the, the time that the Christians have and to try to uh, make these, think these lessons so they can have time for them and not drag them out too much, okay? Jeremiah is on fire. You know, the Bible says, all of my springs of joy are in you. Meeting Christian people, helping Christian people, them giving me thank yous and thank yous, that's my life. That's koinonia. That's God's agape and brother to brother. And that's where uh, my happiness is. Okay? And... Uh, I was able to help brother, brother Randy here a couple of days ago, and, and uh, that's what I want to do. That's, that's what I want to use my energy for, to help the brethren. And what I'm doing right now is helping the psychology or the psychological um, state of mind that people have. Because the Word of God and even this science is very significant. This is not minor stuff here. It's not as important that you might say repentance and baptism and, and learning that you're, that you're going to bury your life for Jesus Christ and that's going to bring you eternal life in glory and all of these concepts pertaining to basic Christian doctrine. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's that important, but it's very close. This is very important stuff. Uh, Dr. Jim, an old buddy of mine, who used to teach in Los Angeles, K-12, through uh, at the public schools there, along with me, uh, 
he really liked to emphasize science a lot. And and uh, and I know that uh, Dr. Jim would be very happy to uh, run into these videos. He moved to Germany, and I have not heard from Dr. Jim, a wonderful Christian brother who really loved the students and wanted to teach and so forth, and of course um, participate in church activities for the building up of the Stones of Zion. And uh, this is where you're going to find Father's face. This is where you're going to find uh, fellowship and communion between the wings of the cherubim under these circumstances. Let, let, let's take a peek at 57. Uh, I want to go to Psalm 57. Or, let's see, Psalm 57, 10. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. God's care for people who aren't perfect is as high as heaven is. So that's probably about 24,000 miles. So that means that God has a lot of care. As the Bible says, cast all your cares on him, for with him there is much care for you. Remember, science is not here for science. Science is here for love. Do you understand that? That, that loving kindness is the goal of Christianity. Uh, right alongside of your academic development. We, we don't lose sight of care and kindness here while we learn the logistics of heaven and earth. Okay? Now I wanted to share with you that you're looking at probably 24,000 miles high here and guess what? That's how high God's care for you is and, and even though he knows who you are. That's the amazing thing. And we'll close with that. We're going to come back to... I want to go to Psalm 85.3 maybe. And we're going to talk about God has done all of this creation because he just wanted to do it. That's what we're going to talk about. That, that all of this heaven and earth is something that pleased God and that he was very excited in creating these things. And that's very significant. And that, of course, we'll be looking at Psalm, probably 85 something, I forgot the 85.3, and we'll look at that. Uh, of course, that'll be on tomorrow, but not in your time frame. Uh, you could be reading this... Uh, listening to this a hundred years from now or something or uh, well not biblically a hundred years but yeah we want to go to Psalm 85 3 uh, that sounds about right my memory is correct 85 3 no that's the wrong one it's 85 well, I'll find it. Uh, we got a little lost here, but uh, I'll take a look at that tomorrow. Jeremiah's signing off, and what are we doing? We're just singing praises unto our God, because praise means that you're thinking about episodes in your life and in and, and your entire life as an episode that you're very thankful for favorable circumstances and that, and that God has not rewarded you according to your iniquity. And that he has, he has clothed you with the garments of salvation. He has covered you with the garments of salvation. And, and has clothed you with light and with his glory. And he's clothed you with it. And he can no longer see what we are. He sees us in Christ. And the continued victory that was on Calvary and the resurrection and that resurrection power is eternal. It set into motion a locomotive like a choo-choo train that will never stop. Choo-choo, choo-choo, it's never going to stop. Inhale, exhale. God is going to continue to inhale mercy and exhale mercy. He's going to cultivate 
mercy. He's going to cultivate it, he's going to develop it, and he's going to own it and share it throughout eternity. And the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, meaning his mercies. They never come to an end. They're new every morning. And great is God's reliability. Okay. Shutting down, rejoicing in all these lessons here. And, and I, I'm very happy with my board. I, I've used my board for quite a few hours of lessons because, quite a few hours, and uh, because I'm very happy with how it really tells you and shows you where you live, and this is the extent of, of what exists. Okay? And, and the center there, I used a graph from a Christian brother, and I have to contact them because that is something I, I need to check with um, the, the authors of that center image there with the dome and the, uh, you, you can't see the, the stars in the dome very well, but you can see the sun and the moon circling there, okay? In the dome, with, with, the, with the plate, with the bounds, with the waters, which is what we just went over, okay? Very simple um, discussion here, or uh, discourse. Jeremiah is shutting down, rejoicing with you in the coming of our Lord, that you can be with the one that you love and who loves you, and just be with the Lord forever. Okay, no more wars, no more nothing, just no more funerals, just joy eternal. Okay? Maranatha.